Good morning, beautiful morning it is uh, on the bumper breakfast. It's exciting and we are glad to be here with you. A bit of technical issues um, delayed our start this morning. But of course, we get to serve you the best meal ever, ever, ever. Right from the papers, the top stories and of course, some of the stories that made it round of the clock between in the last 24 hours. We also get to look at some critical issues that has to do with our environment on a typical Thursday. So yes, get seated, get ready and let's go on the ride together. My name is Tomisi and it's a pleasure being here with you this morning with the beautiful, electable Onome Ito. Onome, good morning. Good morning, Tomisi. Why are you wearing that kind of hair? When did you start? Ah, uh, you told me, told me to do blend now. That should blend. So I said to blend it with gold. I don't understand <laughs> it because this is me. Like I'm the only one in this office that does this kind of thing. <laughs> when did you join me? Recently. Lisa, Lisa. <laughs> Thank you for the confession because uh, this is really no. I absolutely know you, <laughs> but it's beautiful. Really, Thank it you. really is uh -huh. beautiful. Yes, good to have Odome here with us this morning. Of course, uh, Mr. Akifatuke also made it to the studio. Mr. Fatuke, good morning. Um, let me apologize on behalf of Nigerian Lagos for keeping you on the road for an average of two hours. Well, it does happen. Um, it has always happened. Hopefully, it's just to gain an understanding of that mm. and then adjust yourself to it. However, there has to be continuous improvement. The reminders of traffic, transportation must always be on their toes. I mean, imagine somebody was being rushed mm. to last it in an ambulance. What would have happened to this way? So they all have uh, demonstration effects. Yeah. Thank you very much, uh, Tony Singh. Um, it's a pleasure to mm. be here. Good morning, Nigerians. Oh, no, always, good, morning. good morning, sir. It's always a pleasure having Mr. Akifatuke. Uh, Another state man is a communication specialist, a chartered accountant by profession, and of course we get to talk about Nigeria. He's one of the most impassioned people about Nigeria, and I'm just um, blown away sometimes by the, the death of his uh, enthusiasm when it comes to Nigeria. Unfortunately, in recent times, I think that enthusiasm is beginning to dip. Oh, like, uh, like most people, but hope must continue to flicker for the sakes of other mess of the youths, let them realize the fact that uh, there is experience sitting somewhere for them to tap into. So we must not go to them. Mm. They must also not get tired. And together we are going to build the Nigeria of our dreams. Hmm. It's definitely going to be an exciting morning because um, from the angle that Mr. Vatuke is coming from, the stories will definitely get you cracking. I begin with the Guardian newspaper this morning. Some of the stories that made the front page of uh, the Guardian will judge you by the company you keep. Federal government wants Southwest agitators and Buhari to address the UN General Assembly on Tuesday. Gajabia Mila denies comparing IPOB, Yoruba Nation agitators with Boko Haram and Iswap. It was uh, said in the news yesterday that it said there, are no, there is no difference between um, the, the three groups of people, the terrorists versus the agitators. But he denies, um, you know, making such a statement. IPOB, not a terrorist organization, says Owanese. Speaker has lost touch with the realities of the present situation, say Afeni Ferry. Still some of the stories there under YOV. 65% uh, of Nigerians question country's continuous existence as a nation. Report there. Independence Day, youth announced nationwide protests at least nine demands. DMO alerts on default as debts uh, hit 35.5 trillion. Nigeria faces sustainability challenge if we don't grow revenues. Uh, federal government share of debt stock increases to 83%. Loans from China estimated at 1.4 trillion naira. That's about 10% of our budget. That's about 10% of our national budget. If not more. If no more. If not more. Okay. I think our current budget is about 11.3. Echo was meets today to decide next step on Guinea crisis. Jonathan yet to join APC. Nabena insists orderly on EFCC's watch list. Immigration tells the court. Hmm. It's orderly. Hmm. 
A Kwaibom governor signs anti-grazing bill into law. Food prices defy uh, inflation control measures despite the rate decline. That's are the stories on the front page of the Guardian. Okay, so and um, on this day we have DPR to exceed 3.2 trillion naira revenue benchmark, and then it has been adjusted to 5 trillion naira by the end of the year. Gas transportation cold attracts 1 billion dollar investment. Regulators call for industry collaboration in PIA. Okonjo Iweala named Time 100 Most Influential People in 2021. We have military airstrike hits Yobe civilians in Aero. Enough probes incident as Governor mourns victims. FIFA graces Aisha Buari Cup tournament. Salami with debt service to revenue at 98%. Nigeria's borrowing unsustainable. Ask federal government to sell off 900 billion debt assets to enhance fiscal position. Nigeria's public debt grows to 35 trillion naira, says DMO. No recoveries yet on stamp duty, Malami tells governor. A partnership that works. Para State Governor Abdurrahman. And that's all for this day. All right, let me take a look at the nation newspaper. UNICEF attacks care 1 million kids from schools. Parents keep children away in fear of abduction. UNICEF statistics for 2020, 137 million kids expected back 20 attacks on schools. 1,436 pupils abducted, 16 children died, 200 are still missing. Now the states affected are four, Zamfara, Katsina, Niger, and Kaduna. The four states, how exactly has Sakoto escaped this? I think we need to sit with Governor Aminu Tambua and have a conversation with him about this governor's meeting in ogun hova vat others oyetola hudom uh, sign anti-open grazing bill presidency ones on yoruba agitators ipop alliance u.n should ignore the demand speaker says secession agitators not different from bukwara please he has denied making such a statement lagos also road repairs for completion in december that's uh coming between the minister of works and housing and the dearest governor of ogun state Governor Dakwa I hope while you are at it, you would also attend to the um, demands of the judicial workers in the state. Jusun has been on strike in the state for, for a couple of months now, about two months plus. Kano Cemetery is filled up, lawmakers seek creation of new grants. And uh, public officers draw Esther Code allowances for review. Inflation drops to 17.01%. Why we seized or the lease passport. Nigerian airstrike kills 10 in just 20 in Yobe. Community hit in Hera. Mr. Fazuka, hmm. hope you're listening. Niger listening. struck Nigeria and killed. 10 people and injured 20 in a state in Nigeria, in Damaturu, to be precise. Ondo borrows uh, to pay wages, says uh, Kerry Dulu. DMO puts public debt at 35 trillion naira. COAS as the chief of army staff to commanders set up. All right, those are the stories that made the front page of uh, the nation newspaper. Okay, on the punch, we have Nigeria piles up 2.36 trillion naira debt stock in three months and i says orderly on efcc watch list as s governors use immigration national assembly defends Buari's 4.9 billion dollar loan plan apc pdp clash over debt all countries engage in deficit financing we are still within borrowing limits senate says Buari loans for budget financing not for looting as done by pdp says ruling party APC borrowing to finance corrupt lifestyles of its leaders and their cronies, alleged PDP. Abiodun eyes federal government's 83.5 billion naira loan for Ogun Cargo Airport. Others, gunmen invade Lagos farmhouse, kidnap businessman, shoot passenger. Reconstructing Ota to Abel Kuta Road will cost 56 billion naira. Fashola, Oshun open grazing law defaulters risk one year imprisonment. Lecturer Su Sonwulu, CP over COVID-19 test, demands 65 million naira damages. And reps demand probe of custom killings in all your community. That's all on the Punch newspaper. All right, these are the stories that made the front page of the papers. Let's quickly take this tiny break. When we return, we'll take a look at the stories in that. <laughs> Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I 
Welcome to the Bumper Breakfast once again. We begin our conversations this morning with uh, that first one that really struck me uh, this morning. Mr. Fatuke, the anti-open grazing bill was signed by a quiet bomb, but co coincidentally, it was also signed by Oshun State yesterday. Lagos passed it last week, awaiting the signature of the governor, if I'm correct, on uh, your state already has the law in existence before it was just amended to suit the current circumstances Undo state was the only one who signed as such the day the deadline but despite all of that the yeti Allah yesterday alleged that uh, cows will come to as high as the uh, two million naira per cow if this bill passes now the other states from the south south from the southwest are signing it what do you see happening to livestock Oh, well, very clearly, um, let's recognize the fact that uh, Governor Autumn had signed that bill into law. Yes. Uh, it's not South South. Yes. So I know we are looking at the same We're looking states, at Benway. State, now. Uh, state go governors. Um, yes. Yes. Let me quickly say clearly, unambiguously, that hooray. Fiscal federalism is beginning to knock at our doors. Mm. It's going to be at a very high cost. Extremely hard. High cost. Hard. 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 Wow. Of, it's already high. Hard cost. Mm. You know, when you are not prone to change, any change whatsoever, you see it as a disruption of your life and you want to claw at everything to just pull it down. My point is that um, we are going to have socio-cultural dislocation, which is what physical federalism or what you call restructuring is going to be. You are going to say to Onome that has just come out of school, came out of school, many months after me, that you can no longer go to school. Mm. No, 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 no. What are you saying? You can no longer go to school because I think I have an alternative that I think is going to be better for you. And she cannot wrap her head around it. And I said, you know, there is this um, Eastern apprenticeship system mm. that we are trying to integrate that will make you an entrepreneur right from when you are, you are going to be in school something similar to what finland is doing now she wants to listen but she will never believe mm. in fact she may begin to think that i want to torpedo her future mm. change whether for Nome or whether for me if she now just tells me uh, now i'm going to do a couple of things for you and as i say what i'll be asking what do you mm -hmm. know forgetting the fact that she has better understanding of technology than me open grazing is the way the whole of the world has gone but you know that when things come to nigeria you begin to see things in reverse somebody has said cows are going to cost two million tommy C, do you remember at the onset of uh, gsm they said gsm is going to what cost uh, thirty-five thousand. not just an arm mm. and a leg it will cost you the whole thing. It's just not practicable until Mali, until Ghana yeah. started weaving it and said, what is giant Nigeria waiting for? Giant of Africa, what is it waiting for? Eventually, competition came in and uh, the GSM is a technology we should Mr. Patrick, how much did you buy your SIM card at that point? I remember I I 50... <laughs> because I think we start from SIM card to the expensive. Yes. yes. It came with a surgeon Phone. Sergeant phone, yes. Mm -hmm. 50,000 naira. Good. At that time. And then, of course, people are pursuing me around <laughs> to come buy the same thing. You see, when you are not prone to want to change, that's what is going to happen now. Let me, let me now say something. Whether we like it 
or not? Mm. Unfortunately, more blood is going to flow. Unfortunately, more blood is going to flow because we don't have leadership. There's absolutely no going back. On the Hansi Hukun Grazen? There's absolutely no going back. Do you... I quickly want to also say something. You may get something on this on the street. Mm -hmm. If you are not careful, at the about you may lose it. Mm -hmm. What do I mean? Mm -hmm. Yes, open uh, anti-open grazing bill. Those who have enacted it, has it been enforced? Because the enforcers, the power of the enforcers, still st <laughs> resides at the center. Yes, I, I was going to so, ask: Do you think they have the wherewithal to to enforce this bill? I For example, not believe, a state like Ocean State. I don't believe they have the wherewithal. But okay. they have the will. Okay. And where there is a will, there That's will a be way. a way. Now, mm -hmm. um, the way may now then cost more than we expect, but eventually, freedom Welcome. is coming tomorrow. <sighs> That is uh, that's that, that, that's AP my South Africa. Okay, uh, so interestingly, yesterday Amotekwe in Undo State arrested a hundred cows. Yeah, Undo State has been at the forefront of this for yeah. quite a while because yeah. they've been arresting cows and getting compensation for farmers whose farms were destroyed for quite a number of months. Osho State has Amotekwe down to a T. The Amotekwe force in Osho State have been working with the police to rescue kidnapped victims here and there yes they're working hard Akwaibom, however has none of this so do you see the nigerian police force helping or obeying this law because ignorance is usually when was it signed i mean you see a policeman ask you um for your papers and you or your driver's license and you ask and you tell him I'm sorry, it is not your job to ask me for my driver's license. And he tells you, it was our, our boss told us, you know, no cars, that right. we can ask for it. <laughs> they don't read the law. So this is a new law. Do you see the Nigerian police force in a state like Akwaibo or in a state like Benue, where Governor Samuel Otom has been the most harassed? And the farm, the, the, the farm produce and the farming uh, lifestyle of the Benue citizens have been, you know, almost to grounded to a halt. Do you see them obeying this law? Do you see the police are helping to enforce this law? Thank you very much, uh, Toby C, for that question. I hope I will be as brief as I can. Please, let's leave the hapless police. It's mm -hmm. not the problem of the police. It's mm -hmm. the problem of the head. Um, we have a government led by um president muhammad Buhari, who has centralized all authorities despite the fact that we have said look we should decentralize there are pros and cons to it but he has refused uh, i'm sorry where i came from they say when a fish is going to begin to rot badly in a mm. way that is going to be cancerous it starts from the head mm. if the head is not properly screwed let's leave the toes so it is not going to be the fault of those police sergeants As that you, you see them, out there because policemen. you already have a central command that has said that that is the rule that is the law okay well okay now we are now getting into a situation and this is the warning signal they know it mm -hmm. i'm talking of the authorities know it and it's the reason why they are coming back to say uh, Sunday Boho or whatever it is that uh, they, are, they are joining together. They are the ones harassing Nigerians. Hmm. Those at the center, by their policies, by their action and inaction, are the ones that are harassing Nigerians. So, please, the police people, you will hmm. be shocked. You will be amazed to go see what the average Nigerian police is doing outside our country when they go for... Uh, peacekeeping for they are respected despite their little training mm. what is lacking is therefore is the body language of the policy makers who are out for some other agenda that is neither good for them and giving them bad name nor good for those of us in there you said acquire hmm. For people who know the history of the Fulani Jihad, the positive aspect now, not the negative aspect, you know that Kutpadam Fodio in 
now send people with flags to go out there to go do what is needful, including education, not what we are seeing here. Go out there, educate people, of course, proclaim your jihad. People in as far as Ilori, as far as old or your empire, Alafi, or your, or your Alafi, they were already hearing, feeling, smelling that some of these things are going to come. Initially, they took it with open hand until the people, the messages they sent, now started having their own little agenda and then they started the issue of land grabbing. Mm -hmm. Eventually, um, Amadou Belu now made a statement, allegedly, that they are going to carry the Quran to go deep in Atlantic Ocean, whether that is true or false. But we are beginning to see situations where the present regime, more than any in the history of Nigeria, is pursuing some agenda to grab land, asking people to come from yonder. You may, you may mention that uh, Niger is coming to attack mm. Nigeria. Like, Mistakenly. Mister, deliberately, because they now know that the, the, the elephant is sleeping, so everybody can start to come and crawl. It's most unfortunate. And let's talk about that one, because uh, the Niger Republic has also been the, in the forefront of the insecurity, the fight against insurgency, particularly charge Niger. We've been in the boats together and we've been suffering this pain and uh, the Lake Chad Basin, the Lake Chad yes. Basin entire yes. Lake Chad Basin together. Yes. Yes. Um, about 10 villagers were killed in the airstrike allegedly carried out by Nigerian Air Force in pursuit of Boko Haram insurgents. Um, the Nigerian Air Force launched the airstrike on Buhari village in Yunusari, Yunusari local government area north of Damaturu, the state capital of Yobe State. Um, the airstrike, it was gathered, was in error. A source at the Garda General Hospital told uh, uh, the correspondent of the nation newspaper that 20 wounded soldier um, villagers were admitted at the facility and 10 people were killed. And the killed are ones that had been taken, but no bodies were brought to the hospital, but they believe that ten, over 10 people were killed in the village. Now, this is one thing. We are fighting Boko Haram, Iswad, together. This is not the joint attack. How exactly do you strike another country? Well, if if, uh, you, sorry, well to me, you actually said that they say mistakenly. I, I'm just <laughs> wondering, can we mistakenly strike together? That's not possible. Well, uh, my, so my, 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 my take to this, I think we need to drill down more. Um, I do not believe, uh, from my knowledge of how security and joint task force works, mm -hmm. that this ab initio is not within the knowledge of the high task command. Okay. Okay. And don't forget that um, should I say that on television? We have been beating silly. We have not moved as much as we should have moved. Mm. I remember the Debbie, late Debbie's time. That has to come and show us how to pursue um, Boko Haram. But now we now know that uh, we could not have pursued Boko Haram because we have our legs, hands, brains all entangled in people who are sponsoring Boko, Boko Haram. They are part of government, they are in civil service, they are in military, allegedly. Uh, were you aware that yesterday the UAE actually announced that there were some people sponsoring? Um, I am aware that before that yesterday's yeah, yeah. announcement, long before that that time, UAE had sent lists to government. A lot of people know them, and the Nigerian government has decided to look the, the, the other side, mm. lending credence to what um, Abacha said. The Boko Haram went for more than a week. The hand of government was there. So that, now, because their hands are there, you know, and Allegedly. all that kind of stuff, Niger will, can always now then say, yes, we are trying to protect our own borders too. So like Debbie, they, they, they drove our people back into our territories. And then, on a man like you said, um, that mistake uh, happened. I like to let Nigerians know that that alleged mistake, more and more such mistakes are going to to happen, more and more blood are going to be lost for um, a country 
a really big country that prides itself as being the center of Africa no more, and that, that um, is the giant of Africa, now a dwarf. Mm. Um, we are not going to be getting Niger, Chad, bombing, yeah, and um, taking hostage to our people because we don't have the capacity, that, that are the truth. Mm. And then we have a regime that um, is supporting is supporting kids and king mm. that come from that area. Mm. Unfortunately, nothing is going to come out of this. Mm. Uh, please go and write it down. There are a lot of things I see on television and I say nothing is going to happen. Something is going to happen and it eventually happens. This is one of them. Nothing is going to happen. Um, my heart... You really do so not have faith. I, Nigerians do not have faith. Nigerians who choose to think straight do not have faith mm. that uh, we have the capacity to prevent the so-called accidental discharge. We are having internal accidental discharge on a daily basis anyway, yes. and nothing comes out of it. Now they talk of all those words because those who are ruling us are much more interested in whatever it is, Commonwealth that they have taken, to be flying jets around, to be doing wedding and all that. So you see, uh, interestingly, they cannot, you, you, you know, somebody said when you are eating, you don't talk, eh? Mm. So when you are eating, what do you expect when mm. you are flying jets, when you don't even feel, mm. when you have a headache and you can fly out and go and treat it somewhere else, where you send all your children to education somewhere else, mm. how can you not be thinking about but what is happening in your backyard? About, about your backyard. So if, mm. you know, I said it on television, unfortunately, the real thinking of many in high places is to ask for an earthquake. Well, let's, to really, just let's destroy look at it. as many people as possible. Then you see crocodile tears, and then it is to your back. <laughs> it's to your so it's, it's it's the reality is very harsh, but that is exactly what we are getting from the people that are ruling us. If we can put up the map of Nigeria, my director can do that for me. Uh, if you look at the map of the typical map of Nigeria, I made a comment while we were reading the papers the other time, and I think Onome also saw it in one of the papers where yeah. we mentioned um, the states of Boko Haram, where UNICEF was particularly uh, okay, mentioning yeah. how um, children have been affected, the out of school children. I think I have that. Um, yes, yeah. I have it here in the nation. Uh, one of the things that I wanted to look at, I mentioned that. What is Governor Aminu Tampua doing? Because if you look at the left of um, the map of Nigeria, there's Kebi, there's Sakoto, there is Zamfara, and uh, there is Katsina, there is Kano, uh, there's Kaduna, and there is Niger beneath. I'm now wondering, um, Niger is big, really big. Sakoto is at the hedge right there. How they get into Sakoto? How they get into Zamfara without passing through Zakoto is you know, amazing. They are actually bushy areas. They still have like forest in those places. And that's what I'm wondering so it's because easy for them to cut their So Zamfara tree. is almost Zamfara is almost beneath Hello, those places. No. They don't have forests there. They have deserts. Vast you land. Know the, you, you, know, you know the reason why? Why? I'm weeping inside of me. Because I had my higher school certificate education from Sokoto. Hmm. And then you actually if went you to went Zaria, Kaduna. Up and then I came to, to Kaduna Zaria. University in Zaria. Zaria. Wow. If you went up, there is a place called Ilela that links to the Niger, the child that you are talking exactly. about. Open open field. I mean I say something. One of the best schools that we had at that time the people of King's College, the people of Queen's College, the people of Federal Government College, Worry, the people of Federal Government College, Sokoto. I went to Federal Government, Sokoto, and eventually Federal Government to Dubolu, and then quite a number of other Federal Government Colleges came on. Mm. They were the cream, the la cream mm. of secondary school education. I read it on social media. I'm praying that it is not true. Okay. That that Federal Government College in Sokoto was abruptly shut down. And they said, parents, come and pick your children because we got a threat letter from bandits. That so they're going coming to attack. to attack. I will never, never, never forget. Because in 1976, excuse me, 76, 77, in 1978, 
1977, 78, General Obasanjo came to come and see the Sultan of Sokoto. He paid a courtesy visit. I remember, I still remember very well. Virtually on his way out, met us in Federal Government College, Sokoto, and he made a statement. He said, Wow, I don't have much time. I would have loved to tour this place, but now that I'm here, I hear you people are doing fantastic things in here, and the federal character is working because you know, I mean, mm, every, children from all over the country. And just imagine, I hope General Obasanjo reads that that is going around to say that parents come and pick up, you know, parents from Lagos, parents from Wari, and all that kind of. How do you now then get to Sokoto? I want to come back your points. Deceive not yourself because Aminu Tambua has been crying out and been saying that not only does he not have the capacity in terms of being able to gather out there and don't forget Reverend Father Bati Okuka is there. So everybody sees what is happening. Mm. So irrespective of what we are reading in newspapers, the whole of the north, not west, not east, not central, Coming down to Oyo, coming down to, to Kwara, and by inference, Lagos, Center of Excellence, we are all surrounded in a very bad way. So, let me bring up that response. That is a from... very bad situation to look at. I mean, Tambuwa cannot come and face me and tell me that, yes, the state is not in included. The state is very much included. Because I was just wondering how Mount UNICEF, how UNICEF came up with the statistics where Zamfara, Katsina, Niger, and uh, Niger, and Kaduna. These states are beneath Kaduna. They They're are, beneath Sokoto. They are contagious. And to this extent that they are contagious. But don't forget, my country has a very good way of hiding and suppressing <laughs> uh, statistics. And <laughs> before you know what is happening, I just told you and I, and I just corrected Onome that that place for, for 12 kilometers between Guzo and Sokoto, Guzo, Zamfara State. Mm -hmm. I hope uh, Zamfara State is. Included. Yes, it's actually good. It's number one. Now, you can travel 25 to 30 to 50 kilometers open land, vast land waiting for cultivation that instead of doing that cultivation what my country is looking at is backward thinking about open grazing thinking about so many other negative things and asking bandits to come they call them bandits i call them terrorists so the whole of that place is there is a place they call arugungu and there is a festival they call arugungu fishing festival yes. it's one of the best you can get ever that can attract a lot of FDI into this country. What have we done? Close our eyes, supporting tacitly or otherwise, Iswap, Boko Haram, and asking Niger to now be telling us that they made a mistake to come and bomb mm. Buhari, Buhari town <laughs> and all that kind of stuff. You know, it's so, it's so, it's, they, it's they so, said they made a mistake. It's, 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 it's so, it's so la laughable. They, they, made so a, laughable. they said they made a mistake. Well, but in the midst of all of the mistakes. Except, except that uh, the mistake is such that some lives have been lost. Exactly. For those whose lives have been lost, we will not see it as a mistake. Mm. We we'll see it as misgovernance. We we'll see it as ineptitude. And we we'll see it lack lack of character of the typical Nigerian. And that's what we are mm. facing now. UNICEF, um, you know, alleged that um, about one million children are being scared from school. With the kind of picture you just painted, I really don't see um, how children will not be scared. I mean, if you're a parent and they give your child, I remember Federal Government College for me, my admission was to um, Okiwe. Okigwe. Okigwe. I think that should be in Imo State. Yeah, Okigwe is in the east. East yes, is in yes. the east. And my father wanted to. And the connection, he was like, you must, no. you, you must understand that if you went to Kigwe, if you went to Wari, if you went to Federal Government of Sokoto, let me tell you. That was when the militancy was really. Let me, let, 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 let me give you an idea of how, to, how it works. So you have people from, because of federal character, which, yes. is, which, which is not becoming unitary character now anyway. So the best from your end, the best from my end, the best from my end, 
we all gather together, we go for fantastic good education, and they come out in their work and school sites. So, when we want to go home for holidays, that is the education. They drive all of us, say from Sokoto to Kaduna, we all join the train. The train will travel all the way from Kaduna down south. So, Kaduna, Kafanchan. You now get to Kwara State, you get to Oyo State, you get to Ogun State, you get to Lagos. We are all put in coaches, we are all bantering, we are all enjoying one another. It was so pro unitate. That's, that's exactly what we call a federal government colleges. That got wiped off because some people were not only selfish, they were not going to fund education and they were going to take such experience out of Nigerians. So what, what are we now breeding? We are breeding people that will just be looking at things from a very narrow prison. Mm. Oh my God. You talk about education um, out of school children, the IDPs. One million One being million. scared to even go to school. We already have 13.5 million out of school children in that, Nigeria. That, you now have another 1 million, one million, million. joining. That, that, is, that, is, that is even underestimating it. Underestimating it. I'm telling you, I'm part of the cultural practices in there. Onome is a very big girl. 15 years ago, 15 to 20 years ago, Onome, just whether you're in primary school or you're in secondary school, you know who your husband is hmm. by nature. And by the time you, you are 12, 13, 14, 15, somebody has decided to put you in family way and then you are not right out of school. The fistula hmm. then thing becomes so very wide. A now, very big issue. What? is now happening is that nigeria according to the people who should know say nigeria educationally has been taking 60 years backwards under mm. the watch of the present mm. regime so idp comes now even if we have idp comes mm. the food that you take to idp comes is being scammed and stolen yeah. by people, by who are people. Like, so uh, if anybody knows about sodom and Gomorrah, please go check it out we are facing some sodom and Gomorrah times four in our country today. Mm. Some other countries have faced it. Rwanda was in a situation before, mm. but when they had a proper head sitting on the neck, they got turned around. I don't know we are going to turn on Nigeria around, but not under the present regime okay. of, um, <sighs> of consciousness and um, visionless individuals. I am using hard words because I'm a parent and I know what it takes. Mm. For parents to send their children to school, and that is the last they will ever hear about them. Is that a country? No, it can't be a country. So we've been talking so much about Nigeria. I want to make a quick comment before we take a break and bring in our next guest. Okay, so so many parents actually at this stage already want to bring out their children from um, schools that are far away. You know, like before when schools are resuming, first thing that comes to your mind is, okay, go to boarding school because if you will learn there, you, you become body, body, yeah. <laughs> you boarding come house. in boarding house, you become independent, mm. you become this, you become that, but the way it is now, everybody is so scared because you don't know what will You can't happen. even conceive the yes, idea. You don't even know what will happen to As a matter child. of fact, the, the, the parents, you know, you have two parents, the parent who conceives the idea of sending your child now to boarding school in a state within Lagos, is good if you say a good state Lagos. Eh? within lagos is fair mm -hmm. i know at one point in time lagos too was invaded at cancun and um we started saying hey wait a minute is this safe mm. and if anything should happen anomaly god forbid if a plane should drop on nigerian skies now planes have dropped from nigerian skies do we have the capacity to trace to check all the time mm. that this has been happening, what have we learned? Mm. Same with education. They are bombarding us right, left, and center. And I expect somebody to now then say, hey, wait a minute. We've got to change tactics. We have to change plans. If we are not talking about Amotech, that is the mm. time to encourage those people. But the people at the center are saying, no, you should not encourage them. What are they therefore saying? That they prefer the situation of confusion that we have, even in Lagos. Even in Ogun State, mm. if they can't pick any school, God forbid, if they can't pick up any school, nothing is going to happen. And even they are caught. Some have been caught. 
They say, uh -huh, after you catch us, take us to police. Take us to police. They will be released. Everything is enmeshed in a total, a, to a total sense of hopelessness. But I know the God that we serve, hmm. who fights for the weak, who fight for Nigeria. You will see in, in due time. We need to take this quick break. When we return, we're still talking on the bumper breakfast. Don't go away. I want to marry you, no be play play. Oh baby girl, come follow me home, my mommy in Duro. Won't fake one with you. Oh baby girl, come be my lover. I wanna care for you, yes, forever. Oh baby girl, you are my sugar banana. Pretty in and out, baby. Oh, bad for me. I will sing for you, do they miss on me? I will love you longer than if I me. I will care for you more than care me. Uh, baby, oh, bad for me. I will sing for you, do they miss on me? I will love you longer than if I me. I will care for you more than care me. Uh, baby, oh, bad for me. You want it come so, so new. Always on my mind, baby, oh. Oh, baby, oh. So, so new, oh, baby, oh, oh, baby, oh, oh, baby, oh, baby, girl, come give me children, whether I'm boys or girls, I don't care, I know they'll make a lot of sense, I can place all of my pet on me, let me love you, sell and sell, baby, my tomato just, you are the one I've been looking for, you are the one that makes my world so beautiful, let me be your full baby, oh, I will sing for you. I will love you longer than I will care for you more than care me, baby. Oh, I will sing for you. I will love you longer than I will care for you more than care me, baby. Oh, it won't come so so new. We're back here on the bumper breakfast and uh of course uh, our guest is caught up somewhere in traffic so we we'll begin a conversation uh, on phone just before he gets here speaking to the gm of la soda mr Dari dairy good morning mr dairy how are you today good morning madam i'm fine thank you <laughs> so tell me exactly why you're not in the studio yet uh well you know uh this is Lagos. we have different kind of people on the roads and uh, you just have to be careful and uh, think for other people mm. sometimes maybe you don't take it off you know and you get stuck briefly mm. uh, I'm, I'm hoping that you're going to get here before the end of the program but let's talk uh, today we're discussing what kind of change do people really want is it uh, food for the boys, you did call it. And I, I was just wondering, like I said, share your line of thought with us. Hello? Yes, I want you to share your line of thought with us. Yes, um, you know, uh, Nigeria, a lot 
there's a lot that can be better and um, things uh, need to be uh, we need to start looking at how to improve uh, situations and systems and structure. Mm. And I believe that is the essence of our clamor for change. Mm. You know, but sometimes you find out that um, we we don't really define the kind of change we want. We just have that general and, word, change. Yeah, change. And, you know, and we forget that everything in life is a process. You know, and at the end of the day, we ourselves, all of us, have to be committed to that process mm -hmm. in our own various ways and little ways. But first, we must understand what we really want as a people, you know, and um, in that, we can better know how to engage with the system mm -hmm. and, you know, hold our people in authority. Uh, accountable mm. but let me ask a question right there before you go on uh, you're talking about the kind of change that we really want and people do not really are you saying that nigerians are clueless are you saying that we're all following a mantra but we're not really aware we're not sure of what exactly it is that we want okay let me speak from my own area of understanding uh the let's just say disability law for example yes uh uh, stipulate a free health care for people with disability. Okay. Now, now that statement free is um, is open. True. Right. True. So now, you know, we need to now start to, be, to define at what stage, to what extent is free. Mm. Now, now, and don't forget that the health care system is a, a the health care service is a value system okay. and at the end of it is the um there's a cost okay okay now for legal state government for example in actualizing uh health care for the citizens uh the governor Baba uh in the in implementing the health insurance scheme paid for 16,000 vulnerable people up okay. front. 16,000 vulnerable people. Yes, mm. people. And uh, 2,500 of them were specifically persons with disability. Now, you will understand that and health insurance is a, it's like a top gun. Okay. Because when health emergencies come, they don't respect whether you have money in your account or not. Or otherwise. They have be to, those needs have to be at, attended to. So now, putting an healthcare system in place, uh, insurance structure in place, guarantees that at that moment of need, somebody is footing that bill. True. Immediately, as that when needed. That's what the essence, the whole essence of an insurance scheme. Right. You know, so now for people with disability, for example, this is the first time this bad is happening anywhere in this country. Okay. Legal state is the first to specifically uh, make provision for people with disabilities and vulnerable. Now, mm. that scheme may have some loopholes that does not take account of peculiar health challenges of people with disability. Yes. But initially, the thing has to be kickstarted, has to, you know, get started. Because if you don't start it, you can't start to know where and where to improve. Okay. Development is an ongoing process. Right? Yes. So it, it's a learning, situ a learning uh, situation for the healthcare provider, for the insurance, the health insurance company, and for people with disability too. Okay. You know? So okay. there, there is need for patients and understanding from all involved as the system gets perfected. Okay. Okay. You understand? But oftentimes what you see happen is that the moment there's any slight uh, glitch in the system, people throw up the work. I mean, the mm. in this manner and, you know, mm. in the agitation. But, 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 but let's look at the number two. If the governor paid for 16,000 vulnerable people, um, that yeah, doesn't... 
that doesn't cover it doesn't cover any percentage of Lagosians. I mean, what's the percentage of uh, people with disabilities we have in Lagos? It's an ongoing. It's an ongoing process. Okay. That is beginning. Now, the, you should also factor in the capacity of the system to be able to handle the multitude of uh, complaints, requests that that's going to come in. So, if you overload the system, have an issue, mm. it could collapse the whole structure. So, the sixteen thousand is a beginning. Okay. What can I can provide you? Uh, I can I show you that Lagos State Government. Uh, policies are uh, based on uh, our data, on research. Mm. You know, so and you need to factor in a whole lot of things. You have less than one minute for this call. Unfortunately, we need to get Mr. Dare back in the studio. And of course, while we're trying to do that, Mr. Fatuke, let me come to you here. Um, if the legacy policy is based on data and um, the governor has been magnanimous enough to pay up front for 16,000 people, uh, vulnerable people, do you think that this would be a continuous process that will finally or maybe um, get to have the desired effect on the health um, sector. Thank you very much, um, Tumisi. And um, let me start by thanking Mr. Dari Dairo and thanking uh, our state of excellence, Lagos State, Jason uh, Governor, for this attempt. And for me, it's an attempt. <laughs> and, um, it's better you do something than mm. not do something at all. But in economics, um, sometimes you say, don't do at all. Let me just know that um, nothing is happening. Uh, mm. And then I can then, then plan, plot, and make sure that I succeed. Most football teams, that is how they started. They lost matches. They went back into the drawing board, did a lot of, you know, real trading, catch them from, from youths, and then they became stars. The Ronaldos of this world, <laughs> the Messi's of this world, played against Nigerian stars at one point in time, and we beat them silly. The difference was the fact that when they were under 20, and then now they came, uh, one quarter, and all that, and all those stars that we had that we, in 1985, I think it, we came from the Olympics with gold. Some went to sleep, the rest went abroad. And I want to say, hopefully, uh, Mr. Adairo is listening to me. Why I say it is an attempt is that I come from the school of strategy, mm. and strategy tells me because when Mr. Adairo was speaking. He was talking about data, he was talking about 60 million, I was talking about... And then I, I want to ask the question, what? What? You cannot manage what you do not measure. And there are three P's. I just now people, plan, programs, projects. Who are the people? Unless we are able to capture in, in, in real succinct terms, you cannot really be planning. I need you to hold that thought a little bit. Uh, l let me take this uh, tiny bit of break as we round off. We'll be back. Thankfully, we have Mr. Dari Dairo in the studio this morning. Good morning again. Good morning. Yes, yeah, so uh, before you came on set, Mr. Fatoke was uh, picking holes uh, in the entire plan, was talking about people. I was picking holes from the helicopter perspective. Okay. I have you know, a private sector background, and uh, Mr. Governor, if he's listening, 
knows me uh, a bit about me uh, in terms of how we fly the kite. I sympathize with you. I sympathize with Mr. Governor. I sympathize with Nigeria. Not necessarily what you are doing. And I already gave kudos that you are even attempting to do something. What I was not then making the point is that you cannot manage what you cannot measure. Talk about people. You talk about the governor came with seconds. data about 16 million. 16 million of which people? Are they Nigerians? No, 16,000. 16,000. 16, yeah. Are they Nigerians? Are they Lagosians? What is the age differential? Mm -hmm. What is how many are female? How many are male? Uh, how many are influxing into into Lagos and all that? Those are constitutional that goes even beyond your capacity. So what I will do, therefore, like I said, when I talk about people, I want to know who the people are. I want to know how we measure them. I want to know how we have to change the coloration of the constitution. I cannot, for the like of me be catering for people that are not necessarily residents people who come by flight in the night I and go to, i need to and go then we need to now then put it so that we now then come because what what he's talking about now is program they have a program to mm. ensure within disability what happens to those people who are not disabled do you oh. know that there is a possibility that those of us yes that claim that we can, we are not, we are able. No, it's actually the society that is disabled. We so are, we are, we are more disabled than they are. Time, <laughs> because my, my time is fast spent. Uh, Mr. Uh, Dario, yes. uh, we're trying to find out hmm. exactly how effective you think this scheme you say is in process. Hmm. How effective do you think it should be? Do, how impactful? Well, the thank, you, thank you very much. I'm, I'm glad that uh, uh, Mr. Akin Fatum, a friend of Lagosians. Thank you very much. <laughs> has an helicopter view understanding of the enormity of problem, and he I, I can't any less agree with him because you know uh, there's even the clamor that they, to give Lagos State a special status because of the enormity of the problem. Exactly. But then it was politicized. Exactly. And there you have it. Now, I'm sure Mr. Governor, on his table, would not want to start um, butting his head against those challenges that are beyond his jurisdiction. Mm. He's gonna, not going to change the Nigerian constitution overnight mm. within his time. Definitely not. He's not going to stop the influx mm. of people into Lagos. It's 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 typical of all mega cities in the world. What we can do is to focus on the vulnerable, the people in dire need. You understand? While we perfect the system to include as many as possible other members, members of, of society. society. We need society. to still have this conversation again and get Mr. Dari into the studio, maybe this time around from 8 o'clock. Uh, apologies to our people who have to cut the conversation and uh, we need to go back. We need to go. We really need to go. Thank you so much for making the effort to Thank make the studio. Me. And I will wire those people that kept you on the way and, <laughs> and stopped you from coming early. Mr. Vatuga, thanks Mr. for Dari, coming. Keep, keep, keep it up.